What did you find lacking in speakers before you designed the clip shorn? I mean, what were you trying to accomplish uh, that no one else had accomplished? Well, it, <laughs> I guess you might say I was trying to copy what Bell Telephone Laboratories had done with their uh, demonstration of stereophonic sound reproduction. They had some huge speakers about six feet high. The woofers were about five feet square. Uh, and the tweeters were multicellular. They used three of these speakers to reproduce the orchestra in full uh, uh, spatial rendition. Uh, they published the, the symposium on auditory perspective in 1934. And uh, that was in January of 34, and I was still a student, of, uh, still a graduate student at Stanford. Uh, that uh, symposium upset the uh, uh, electro electronics department of the uh, electric electric engineering uh, division at Sanford University. We didn't even have, uh, our class discussions were on stereophonic sound. Mm -hmm. What type of dynamic range were you trying to deal with back in the early days? Gosh, how much dynamic range? Uh, I mean, that was a, a lacking quality of a lot of speakers at the time, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, the ordinary speaker uh, would uh, Well, the dynamic range of a symphony orchestra might go from 100 decibels, uh, or maybe 105 decibels sound pressure level at the peak, and the noise level in the auditorium would be about um, plus 55. Well, it was about a 55 dB difference there. Well, we ought to be able to, the, uh, to reproduce the arcs, we ought, ought to be able to cover that dynamic range. Uh, well, the, the speaker used it to, the, uh, to demonstrate the stereophonic effect uh, by Bell Telephone Laboratories. It probably could cover a 60 or 70 dB range. Uh, well, from the noise level to the highest um, sound pressure level of the orchestra, it was quite a uh, quite a demand. Actually, it, uh, it's no problem to get a speaker to cover that dynamic range. Uh, the only thing is, when you get up to about 105 decibels in an ordinary sized living room. Uh, they're up to uh, several, up to an acoustic watt of uh, sound pressure output. And very few speakers would produce that much sound pressure level without a lot of distortion. That's where the horn comes in. The horns were, are more efficient by a factor of 10 compared to ordinary direct radiators. and. Uh, you can get ten times as much power output from a given amount of electrical input. Uh, you can get that power output uh, with, uh, well, you can get 110 or 120 decibel sound pressure level output uh, with substantially no distortion from a horn speaker, where you get, uh, you might have. Uh, 30 percent distortion from direct radiators, the same power output, uh, same, same acoustic power output. So it's acoustic power output that's important, not electrical power input. Yeah, these folks that advertise that their speakers will stand 100, de 100 de watts input, that's a little bit like uh, bragging about how much uh, 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 fill your uh, Octane, octane, octane burner, burner can absorb.